Okay, this video is, is dairy good for you? So, you know, first of all, T. Colin Campbell in the China Studies has an extensive discussion of milk, and in particular, he used casein, the main protein in milk. The other big protein in milk is whey protein. And basically, after his extensive study, uh, he's like the best expert on the relationship between uh, animal protein and cancer in the world. He said casein is the most powerful known tumor promoter <laughs> to mankind. And he felt that animal protein in general was a much more powerful uh, causer of clinically significant cancer than is any of the carcinogenic chemicals. Because a carcinogenic chemical can cause a mutation which may predispose to cancer, but it's a tumor promoter that causes the cancer to actually keep replicating and progress to clinic clinically significant cancer and metastases. Um, milk is associated with a significantly increased risk of prostate cancer. That's a big reason why I quit drinking milk completely. I used to like organic skim milk as a way to eat cereal, but you know I noticed all the cereals, virtually all of them, had high sodium and almost all of them had MSG, so I'm like, there was no more value in cereal. And then why have it with something that's increasing cancer risk? So I quit milk completely years ago. Um, in addition, there's other little things that milk does that people aren't aware of. Uh, milk is very high in calcium. Well, that elevated calcium from the milk will deactivate vitamin D3. And vitamin D3 is a major uh, benefit to us to prevent cancer. So you're deactivating your vitamin D. You don't want to do that. What they measure in the blood for the blood test is just D2 um, versus it's the D3 with an additional hydroxylation. That's the active form of vitamin D, the one that really helps protect you. Um, it's like a thousand times more active than D2. Uh, milk's also very high in estrogens, and those high estrogens have a uh, tumor promoter effect on you know, hormone-sensitive cancers like breast cancer, endometrial cancer of the uterus, and of prostate cancer. Prostate's kind of like the male equivalent of the female uterus or breast. Um, so I recommend zero animal products, thus reducing one's risk of cancer, because animal protein is a tumor promoter. There's no animal that drinks milk after it's weaned. There's no animal that drinks the milk of another species. Um, whole milk has tons of saturated fat. And the thing about it is even 1% milk has lots of fat. And the reason is it's not 1% of calories. It's 1% of the weight of the milk. So 1% fat milk has tons of fat. The whole purpose of milk is to make a cow grow as fast as possible, gain hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Uh, the whey protein is also quite anabolic. That's another reason why I don't recommend taking any of those protein supplements. I think they're stupid. Typical scenario is you'll have some bodybuilder, you know, who's taking steroids, gets big from taking steroids, and then he tells all these poor dumb kids, uh, take a protein supplement. He lies and says that's how he got big and strong, but it's not true. Um, and anabolic steroids really do make a difference. I lived in the football player fraternity, and I saw these guys, you know, playing Division One football. As soon as you know the senior season was over, if they didn't get drafted, they would go off the steroids and they would whoop, drop, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds. Uh, so that makes a big difference for you know speeds recovery. You can lift weights a lot more. Okay, um, we talked about vitamin D3 preventing cancer. That's good. And you don't need that much calcium. All this stuff about you need milk for calcium, that's all BS. You can't find a person with calcium deficiency. The Bantu women, which typically have nine children and nurse all of them three, four years, they don't have any osteoporosis problem. All this stuff about you need milk for calcium, that's all nonsense. Uh, milk also increases the risk of other cancers. The lactose gets split into galactose, and even if you can split lactose, that does not mean your body is able to effectively metabolize galactose. And galactose is basically toxic to anything round, okay? And then by that, I mean your eyeballs, increasing your risk of cataracts, ovaries, increasing ovarian cancer. And I forgot about testicular cancer, but I'll bet it's affected with that, but I don't know for sure. I'd have to look that up. But I think because of my little metaphor of anything round, I think that also was associated with it. Okay, milk will uh, often have bovine leukemia virus, and that potentially can increase the risk of cancer in mammals. Uh, milk is associated with leaky gut and autoantibodies. Milk is associated with increased risk of type 1 diabetes. I was talking to a medical student recently, and he had type 1 diabetes. And I said, oh, it's probably from drinking milk. He was like, really? He had no idea. I'm like, dude, open a book. Okay, um, there's a bunch of papers on that. Uh, milk's associated with multiple sclerosis. Of course, Roy Swank sort of figured that out first, but John McDougall's, uh, you know, done a lot of work on that, and uh, T. Colin Campbell points that out as well. Duh, it's like buterophilin is thought in some ways, uh, the sequence of it is somewhat similar to the myelin 
and you'll get autoantibodies. You know, the whole leaky gut autoantibodies, cross-reactivity uh, mechanism of disease causation. Um, it'll sometimes have uh, significantly added sodium. Sometimes it can potentially contain MSG. So anyways, the bottom line is I recommend zero dairy. Now, you know, to be fair, when I was a kid, I did drink organic skim milk. I had it with my cereal, helped me gain weight. I was a good, strong athlete. I, uh, and, you know, uh, my brothers are good, strong athletes. They all drank milk with cereal. Um, so it does make you gain weight. Um, and you might want that when you're a young guy trying to get big and strong for playing sports. But I think there's too many risks associated with it. And you can get all your healthy calories in other ways without taking those risks. So I recommend complete avoidance of dairy, all dairy. And I mean everything that's dairy. No yogurt, no kefir, no cottage cheese, no, no nothing to do with uh, dairy is, would be what I would recommend for optimal health.